now with all the latest stories. Here's the ITV News. Good afternoon, I'm Faye Barker. There's been worldwide condemnation of an assassination attempt on Donald Trump. The former U.S. president had just started speaking at a rally in Pennsylvania when shots rang out and Mr. Trump was left bloodied with an injury to his ear. The spectator at the rally was killed and two others critically injured. The suspect was shot dead by the Secret Service. From Pennsylvania, our U.S. correspondent Dan Rivers reports. It is a moment of history which will royal America for generations. Donald Trump forced to take cover as shots ring out. The Secret Service bundle the former president to the ground. Seconds later, you can hear their shouts. The threat is neutralized. And Donald Trump's voice asking for his shoes, which appear to have been dislodged in the chaos. Let me get my shoes. Photos of that moment appear to show the bullet mid-flight and Donald Trump's defiance as he emerged blooded but alive. I heard first boom, boom, I heard four boom, boom, booms. Immediately thought fireworks, probably still putting off yeah. fireworks. Yeah. Then the Secret Service jumped. I was just on the ground and I was thinking like, you don't know like who, what their target is, like if it's just Trump supporters or if it's like Trump. So I was just so scared, I was laying on the ground, I was like, am I gonna be next? The assumed shooter was later seen dead on a nearby roof, many wondering how on earth he got such a vantage point. An attempted assassination, apparently millimetres from success, Donald Trump later claiming the bullet hit his ear. Once again, America is contending with the spectre of political violence. It threatens to deepen the rift across this country. Already the events here are the subject of wild conspiracy theories. The Democrats in the deep state are just, they don't want him in office. They don't want him in office. And tonight was proof that they're going to go to any length to take him out. Donald Trump was rushed from the rally to a nearby hospital, but was later discharged. His survival already turned into a campaign message by his son. The fallout from this day will be profound for a country which has had to contend with far too many political killings down the years. Dan Rivers, ITV News, Butler, Pennsylvania. The FBI has named the suspect as 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks. U.S. media are reporting that Crooks was on record showing support for both main parties. Police have surrounded his home in a suburb of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, about 40 miles south of the rally location in Butler. The White House says President Joe Biden has spoken to Donald Trump on the phone. He also addressed the nation, strongly condemning the attack. There's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. It's one of the reasons why we have to unite this country. We cannot allow for this to be happening. We cannot be like this. We cannot condone this. Here, the Prime Minister said he was appalled by the attack. Sir Keir Starmer said his thoughts were with the victims and that political violence has no place in our societies. Meanwhile, Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky shared condolences for the victims and also condemned the attack. A cease of violence in any form and anywhere must absolutely not prevail. I am confident America will rise to the challenge. I wish Mr. Trump a speedy recovery, strength and support to all those who have been affected. Well, let's go back now to Dan Rivers in Pennsylvania. So, Dan, this is one of those moments that really could change everything. Yeah, it really could. I mean, this is only going to further polarise this already divided country, entrenching people's positions, I think. Uh, look, the FBI is now in charge uh, of the scene, but there are going to be some very searching questions for the Secret Service throughout all this, although they did managed to bundle the president to safety. People be, will be wondering how on earth this uh, gun 
Chairman Thomas Crooks managed to get to within 400 feet of a former president on a rooftop with a rifle. And there are reports and, and eyewitnesses who say they spotted this man about four minutes into Donald Trump's speech. And yet he remained there uh, for six minutes afterwards before the shots rang out. OK, Dan Rivers in Pennsylvania. Thank you. Well, to the other big story of the day, we're just hours away from England's footballers facing Spain in the Euro 2024 final. Our sports editor, Steve Scott, is in Berlin. So, Steve, games don't come much bigger than this, do they? No, oh, you're absolutely right, especially if you think about the context of the fact that England's man had never won a tournament since 1966 and was still waiting. Gareth Southgate said last night, he doesn't believe in fairy tales, but he does believe in dreams. And I think what he meant by that was that if England want to realise their dreams, they're really going to have to earn it. They won't write themselves. But of course, Spain will have something to say about that. They've sort of strolled through this tournament to the final, whereas England have stumbled and stuttered a bit and relied on last-minute brilliance to get them all the way through. Jude Bellingham's goal, of course, uh, being one of those Nolly Watkins in the last game. I think Gareth Southgate will pick the same team who started against the Netherlands in what, of course, could be his last game. Now, if he was going to go on to win, given what he's done to the England team, how he's made them so consistent, given the culture change that he's made, I don't think too many people would resent him for that. But, of course, Spain are going to have a big say in what happens tonight. Indeed. Steve Scott in Berlin, thank you. Just a reminder, you can watch all the action tonight right here on ITV1 and ITVX. Coverage starts at 6.30. Mary will have our next news bulletin live from Berlin just before that at 6 o'clock. So from all of us here for now, have a very good afternoon. Bye-bye.